The grunts in Halo are easily killed, pretty weak, and basically cowardly. Well, compared to a 7'2 walking tank, that is. But their actual biology, as well as morphology, would be menacing to you and I. I hope you guys are ready to learn some science, because if you are new here, I use my biology degree, as well as my actual job as a scientist, to supplement your knowledge of enemies and games. And the unsung soldier of the Covenant's army's time has come. And stick around to the end when I try to figure out if you, an average human being, could survive and actually be the victor against the Ungoy. Before we jump into the biology, let's first come to understand how the Ungoy joined the Covenant, which would ultimately lead to their embroiled battles with humanity. The Ungoy home planet is called Balaho. Balaho is going to be a world that would test any species that may evolve there. It is going to be the fifth planet from a blue supergiant sun. If you don't know, a sun in terms of energy output increases as you move from red to white. A blue comes pretty much just before a white star. Our own sun actually has a bluish tint to it, but our atmosphere makes it appear red. Anyways, the planet contains roughly 70% of the gravity we have here on Earth, but the atmospheric pressure is immense. Five times greater at sea level than at Earth's sea level. It sports two moons named Buwan and Padpad. The world is, interestingly enough, frigid due to its distance that it orbits its sun and sports brackish tidal flats as well as numerous swamps. When the species finally hit the point of sentience, they were able to achieve tier 4 societies. If you don't know what that means, then you are in luck. A card should be appearing on screen right now. I put together a video explaining the different tiers. Anyways, so they achieved tier 4 before the activation of the Halo Array. Eventually, an environmental collapse seems to have happened as a result of over-industrialization. Methane is known to be a pretty bad greenhouse gas, and this already exists on Balaho in great quantities. Great enough that the Ungoy breathe it rather than, say, oxygen. This collapse left them back down to tier 7 status when they were reintroduced back to their planets. They wouldn't really recover quickly, and before the Covenant discovered them in 2142, they were still living in tribe societies. When discovered by the Covenant, most of the Ungoy were willing to leave their planet, but some still did not want these trespassers taking over. A large fleet arrived to the planet, and this quickly crushed any of the Ungoy still fighting against the Covenant. The Ungoy surrendered and were integrated into the Covenant. This was not the end of the troubles for them, however. Issues began to brew between the Kigyar and the Ungoy upon their adoption and placement on High Charity. The Kigyar became mildly displaced around this time, and they did this because they had to make room for the Ungoy. This displacement caused the Kigyar females to become stressed, which increased the amount of infant mortality. Not only that, but the Ungoy had a bad habit of accidentally stepping on and wrecking Kigyar nests. Maybe an apartment would have served them better? Who knows? Anyways, this made the Kigyar despise the species that didn't really even want to be there in the first place. The Kigyar devised a plan to poison the recreational drugs used by the Ungoy in an attempt to sterilize them. What made it worse was the fact that the Covenant higher-ups had no plans to correct the issue or really take any retaliatory action against it. This was the tipping point for a lot of the Ungoy. A rebellion broke out and a lot of damage was caused. It was eventually put down by the Arbiter when half of Balaho was glassed to get the Ungoy's attention. The Ungoy fell back in line now, but they had earned a new respect from the Sangheili. The Kegyar still hate them all the same. They don't really care. They're just raptors. <laughs> and don't really care about anything except for their eggs. Then eventually, another war would break out with some hairless apes that also wouldn't go so well. But then again, that war really didn't go well for anyone. Now let's get to everyone's favorite part, the covering of the morphology as well as the consequences of their evolutionary path. Ungoy are not the best soldiers. Let's just get that out of the way. We will cover their psychology in a minute, but they are weak, clumsy, and it appears to make them more cowardly as they do not believe in their own strengths. An Ungoy is around 4 foot 6 inches to 5 foot 6 inches tall. Or for my European brethren, or really the rest of the world actually, 1.37 meters to 1.67 meters. Their weight ranges from 248 pounds to 260 pounds, which translates into 112.6 kilograms to 118 kilograms. Interestingly, they were mislabeled by the UNSC upon their first interaction. Originally, they were thought to be just arthropods like the ones we find on Earth. They also possess a vertebrae, however, which would require changes to our knowledge of how creatures evolve. If you aren't sure what an arthropod is, it's basically just like a bug. And just like a bug, the grunt is going to possess an exoskeleton, but unlike a bug, they also possess an endoskeleton, which is basically what we have. We have endoskeletons. In contrast to bugs of our planet, the Ungoy also have a closed circulatory system, much like humans do. This means that blood and nutrients are contained 
contained within veins and arteries instead of just in the same cavity like the rest of the bodily fluids. However, this is an odd combination, almost as if their species was like a missing link between the vertebrates and the invertebrates. They appear to have just really been the most successful species and this has caused them to not really need to make that jump to be full vertebrae or full invertebrate. The name given to the ungoi is Xenoarthropodal vertebrates. It also appears that they share genetics with primate-leaning amphibians that once lived on Balaho's aphotic zones. And because they are primate-leaning in terms of genetics, they are also bipedal somewhat. Again though, just like apes, they also use their oversized forearms to walk. In terms of gait, they appear to be most closely related to gorillas. Gorillas will walk on their forearms, but in some instances, they can stand upright and quickly walk away. The same can be said for grunts. Their arms are capable of grabbing and firing weapons, as well as structurally supporting them. I know I'm on kind of a tangent of this, I just find it kind of odd that they're pretty much exactly like gorillas, just space gorillas. Anyways, back on track. Their body is covered with a hard exoskeleton, which protects them from perils on their planet and is actually complemented by their endoskeletons as well. Due to the absence of strong gravity on Balaho, or really 70% of Earth's gravity, accompanied with a thick atmosphere, if an ungoy were to fall from great heights, there is a much better chance that they would survive because of really a few factors. First, obviously, gravity wouldn't be much of a factor pulling them down as hard as it does on Earth. Second, the atmosphere would create more drag, slowing them down much better than our own atmosphere. Third, their exoskeletons will provide a barrier from the fall keeping them together. And fourth, their endoskeleton would add extra support to the exoskeleton, kind of just keeping everything where it needs to be. The rocky terrain and the ability to scale heights, oddly enough, is something that the clumsy ungoy excels at. On their exoskeletons are also very sharp barbs, which are used to protect themselves from the many predators of Balaho, and these areas are going to cover the backs, arms, and legs of them. Their mouths have a set of small, sharp teeth, which are actually seen to be kind of related to reptiles on Earth. Because they are sharp, this is clear that they are carnivorous in nature. Some of the species' mouth is set farther inward as well and house really larger and more pointed teeth, so maybe more of an aggressive type of grunt. They possess a flat three-toed foot with another toe on the back of their foot. Interestingly, the hands of the ungoy possess an extremely quick trigger finger. The fast twitch muscle will allow an ungoy to fire a plasma pistol at the same rate that an elite can fire a plasma rifle. The eyesight and hearing of the ungoy are going to be pretty much average compared to humans, but where they beat us exceptionally at is their ability to sniff out danger, which helps them stay alive. Their olfactory sense has been highly developed, which I can only imagine imagine back on Balaho was used to sniff out prey and hunt in the surrounding area. The mask of the ungoy is built with an olfactory membrane that allows the creature to continue to use its best sense in battle. The ungoy blood is light blue and glows. This is more than likely due to the methane-based amino acids in their bodies that they rely on to carry the energy that you actually get from everything that we breathe in. Transfer to your cells and that's what keeps you alive. So those amino acids are going to be carrying the methane compounds rather than, say, the oxygen compounds like our hemoglobin does for us. However, it also is possible that just like the horseshoe crab, which, by the way, I didn't know until I researched this video, that their blood is blue due to high copper content. So that's pretty interesting. I always thought it would be, I don't know, more bronze. The reproduction rate of the ungoy is unprecedented. This is the main reason that they were adopted into the covenant in the first place. Ungoy are going to lay clutches of eggs with the amount that could range from 5 to 12 eggs per cycle. The ungoy will reach adulthood between the ages of five and eight years. This means that at this point, they will be ready to lay eggs of their own and reproduce. Essentially at this rate, they can be used by the Covenant as cannon fodder due to their sheer numbers. Overpopulation was a major issue in their society before, and during the non-war times, there is strict laws on ungoy breeding. That's not to say that the ungoy do not love their children, however, just because they have a lot of them. They value the ties that they form with their offspring, but the children are usually separated from the parents to serve in the military, and due to their lowly ranks, however, However, no matter if the ungoy resent this or not, they cannot overcome the political and military barriers that keep them stuck subserviently. So all those grunts that you kill, yeah, it's really not so great for them either. The intelligence of an ungoy is considered to be quite low by other species, but there has been plenty that have shown that they can be very highly intelligent, resourceful, and knowledgeable. This apparent lack of intelligence is more associated with the fact that the Covenant do not invest in the ungoy intellectually, and they don't really bother teaching them. They receive poor education, if any at all. Kind of ironically, humanity and ungoy would probably get along rather well as they are very outgoing and the most sociable of 
the Covenant races. They possess a sense of pack mentality, much like the dogs here on Earth who are man's best friend, and we get along with dogs very well. Ungoy's brain sensory motor integration develops pretty quickly. This means that the neural pathways are not clogged up with other signals, which can allow them to absorb knowledge much easier than some other species. Because of this, they are able to monitor space for traces of human communication, and on top of this, the Ungoy have learned two to three languages of humans and are able to identify them as well. I mean, I'm human right now, and I know a little bit of Spanish, but all I really know is English, and I just that blows my mind that a alien species could actually learn another alien species two to three different types of their dialects and language. That's really interesting. Anyways, now we come to, I think it's kind of a really cool part, who would win? I don't know why, but it's always kind of cool to see if humanity can overcome another species like we have with every other species here on Earth. So let's just go ahead and state you're a soldier. You possess standard armor, but you have no weapons, just your bare hands. You come across an ungoy who's alone in your path while on a mission. It seems like he left his pistol in the corner while he was sleeping. So, who wins? With the height of the ungoy, there is a good chance that you stand taller than it. But a problem is, is that its arms are much longer so it might have a better reach than you do. So you pretty much have some serious issues working against you. The first is the exoskeleton. You can punch it all you like, but odds are you will probably just break the bones in your hand. The neck of the ungoy is stocky and sunken in. On top of that, most of its body is covered with a metal harness. If you go in just straight to attack with hand to hand, the Ungoy is actually used to that and they possess massive forearms and claws, so they could probably tear you apart. I don't think that these claws are going to be terribly sharp, but the strength of the forearms will break your bones and the claws will probably still tear skin. So the key is to stay out of grappling range. So you think to run around the back of it, but remember it has sharp barbs that will either cut you you or make you bleed out. So again, that's not really going to be a weak point either. Honestly, the way to best a grunt is going to be to use your brain. Blunt force is going to do nothing. However, like in Rocky 4 when Rock heads up to Mars to fight the Martians, there's no air for them up there either. And due to that random memory from Family Guy that officially now takes up a neuron in your brain, you remember to grab its breathing apparatus. If you could pull off a hose and stop it from being able to breathe methane it needs to survive, it will asphyxiate in a matter of minutes. From there, all you have to do is stay out of reach and you just kill the grunt with your bare hands. Obviously, if you have a weapon, that would be a much better approach. A knife can pierce the exoskeleton, killing it, and a gun or a grenade, whatever. That'll just make sure work of it. So, would a human win against a grunt? Yes, but only if you play it smart. If you don't, it would break all your bones and you'd probably just bleed out. So, that about does it for me, guys. But wait, before you go, I want you to do me a huge solid. A card is going to come up on screen and if you wouldn't mind checking out one of my buddy's channels. Uh, I've seen some of his videos. He works really hard on them, and I would appreciate it if you just go look at them. They're really cool. They're kind of like game reviews and stuff like that. Uh, but in the meantime, don't forget to smash that sub button if you liked the video and you know and you liked it. Well, then why not leave a like? Also, did you guys know that I had a Patreon? If you guys want to donate, excellent. If not, don't sweat it. I want to shout out Adam Hartswick for continuing to be a patron at the five dollar level. Thanks, bro. Also, Cosmic Safe seventy four at the one dollar level. You guys rock. The next video should be going over the Librarians and the Metro series. I am working on Warhammer, but the style of play, it's not for me. However, the lore looks pretty solid and interesting, so I will definitely be working on that and that'll be coming out soon. Also, don't worry, more Dead Space is on the way. The next video on Dead Space should be over the Ubermorph. And, you know, I hope you guys find this video interesting. And as always, I will see y'all in the next one.